Hello there and welcome to the Bit of Peacock, it's my channel where we talk all things Leeds United. It's instant match reaction from me, Leeds have just won 1-0 at Elland Road against Norwich City. A lot harder than it could have been really, what it, what it should have been in my opinion actually really in the end. But Leeds United won, Leeds United got the three points and march on now to... A, a bit of a break, a bit of a break in the league, of course. FA Cup action at the weekend at home to Plymouth Argyle in the fourth round of that specific competition. But Leeds have won, uh, and we're going to talk about it right now. So Leeds again were unchanged um, from, you know, from the wins over for the third time in a row from the Cardiff games. So yeah, three games in a row, Leeds were unchanged. Um, and the bench, I think, uh, I don't know if the bench was exactly the same as well. Maybe it was. And, yeah, it, obviously the bench wasn't really used until late on in the game. But Leeds, I thought, I don't know what, it was a really scrappy game, this one. To, from You know, it was a poor, really poor game of football, if if I'm being completely honest. I thought that Norwich, um, I think Norwich started a little bit, you know, quite well. Um Lots of the ball, um, but Leeds got the noses in front early on in, in the 15th minute with what was really our first attack and our first venture forward into the Norwich um, half, really. Patrick Bamford had that attempted overhead kick, uh, which didn't come to anything. And then, you know, it's a lovely goal. Well played by Jorginho Rutter down that, you know, in the middle of the pitch, uses his muscle to get away from the Norwich players and play in Dan James down that right-hand side, who, you know, it was a pinpoint pass from Dan, wasn't it? And uh, it's another assist to his name, six now for him for the season. He's playing absolutely out of his skin, but um, got got injured, took a knock, didn't he, and, and was whipped off at half-time. Hopefully that was in precaution, uh, but I do think that we need another body in there, if I'm being absolutely honest now. And I do think we should be do looking, and we clearly are looking at attacking options, but I think that um, it's something that we need to do um, with both, you know, with Willie, Willie, out, Willie out injured, as he as he seems to be now, um, and, and also Jaden Anthony. Who, 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 I'll speak about Jaden, I think, a little bit later on in this in this video, but... Yeah, for me, we need bodies in there. But anyway, he whips the ball in. It's pinpoint. It's absolutely fantastically weighted straight onto Patrick Bamford's head, who's got a he's got a free header in the in the in the in the middle of the in the middle of the well in the penalty box, sort of six yards out. Heads it down into the corner. I think we've seen trying we seen trying to do this quite a lot in games recently, but it worked uh, this evening. Uh, header down into the, right into the corner past. Past Angus Gunn and into the goal for 1-0 on 15 minutes. Obviously looked like he really enjoyed that. The crowd singing his name after celebrations have finished. And it, that was really the only thing Leeds United could really muster in terms of opportunities. Angus Gunn, I can't really remember him making much of a, of a save at all in that first half. Uh, I thought Norwich actually had the better of it and um, obviously probably should have scored towards the end of the half, shouldn't they? They really should have been one each. It's uh, Gabriel Sarr, who I picked out as a bit of a man to watch in the preview. Should have scored. Um, but, you know, Norwich had chances before that. I mean, I was listening to the Norwich um, commentary. My stream was of the Norwich com of the Norwich. Um, commentary and Bradley Johnson was co-commentating, but they always seem to think that the um, Kenny McLean, I think it was, who absolutely skied it from a corner. Uh, Melier properly flapped at one, which he doesn't like to catch the ball, does he, Melier? I think we need to, you know, somebody needs to have a chat about it w with him. You know, catch the ball. It's okay to catch the thing. You know what I mean? Because you're putting ourselves under immediate pressure, and he did there. Luckily for us, he, he skied the ball high. Um, like I said, the Norwich commentary team. No, com I can't seem to talk in this. Uh, the Norwich commentary team um, seemed to think it was, um, you know, it was an opportunity for them, but it, it, for me, wasn't at all. Just a half chance, really. 
Jonathan Rowe created a, an opportunity um, which he put straight at Melier, and then comes the Gabriel Sara opportunity where again the you know the lad on the le- on the right hand side I think it was Stacy who which most of Norwich's um, sort of start up attacking play came through in that first half. He was afforded far too much space from Junior Furpo, um, and he crosses the ball and gets a deflection and probably puts him off at the back stick and he puts it wide. He should have scored and it's a real let off because it was seconds before the the interval, you know, and we go in one nil up. Um, probably luckily in that in that sense, and I, I felt Norwich had a, a lot better of the of the first half and for me we were really poor actually. Um, you know, kept the ball well, kept the ball well, and were tidy with it most, most, more often than not. But just weren't penetrative, weren't penetrating Norwich enough, near enough, at all. Um, you know, and in the first half, I, I, I did think maybe. I mean, I think Junior Furpo, as good as he's been recently, I think he was definitely a weak link. Like I said, a lot of the attack came down. Um, down our left side, down Norwich's right side with Jack Stacey. Um, you know, actually Gray was was decent um, and he got better as the game went on. So we go in 1-0 up at half time. I think a second goal would have really killed it. A second goal would have seen us home and hosed. Um, you know, we came out the second half. We, we started well the first kind of five, six minutes. Uh, Norwich were really on the back foot. Um, we had a corner, didn't we? A couple of corners maybe and applied a bit of pressure with, with without it telling. And then we had a spell of about 10 minutes in the middle of that second half where we just couldn't get the ball. Norwich were passing it and passing it and passing it about, not really penetrating us, it, 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 were they? But they, they had a lot of the ball. It was very frustrating to watch. And um, the commentary team were getting a bit excited, even though they were passing it around on the, you know, on the, like, the centre circle and such things. But I just think... We were letting them maybe have that bit of possession. Happy to let them have it. They weren't really hurting us with balls behind. I think we all, we only saw it. I think Kenny McLean played down, played the ball down the left hand side um, one time, and that kick came it was just a bit too long. But that was the only time I can remember them really splitting us open at any point. We looked relatively comfortable, and it was all played sort of you know, in front of Leeds, really, and it, we could deal with it okay enough, but it was frustrating to watch because for about 10 minutes or so, we just couldn't get near the ball and they started to exert a bit of pressure and, and momentum seemed to be switching towards them. Uh, and then we, 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 we got a couple of breakaway opportunities. Um, I think one where Jorginho Rutter does well to turn their man play the ball in and increase Somerville just couldn't find anybody in the box. Patrick Bamford had an opportunity where he absolutely skewed it well, well wide. Um, and then there's the, there's the opportunity where Norwich were getting a little bit complacent, I felt, and, and were starting to uh, give away the ball um, in, in the, you know, in the midfield area, which allowed us to spring an attack on them. But we just couldn't find the, that final, um, little bit of final finesse and final touch. And, Chris Somerville probably comes the closest, doesn't he? Where Angus Cunn gets down comfortably, really, you have to say, to 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 stop his shot uh, twice. Actually, where it's a weak shot from Somerville on the edge of the box, and then there's another shot a bit later on from him, um, more more on the left hand side. Uh, he gets down well with his feet, does Gunn to save it. Uh, but you know, it was comfortable from Leeds. I never felt really in. Uh, t- under that much pressure or apart from towards the end where the referee just didn't seem to want to blow the whistle it was a little bit um you know we had a lot of players go down with niggly injuries didn't we in this one Archie Gray went down a couple of times Dan James obviously like I said hopefully it's not too um t- not too serious that because we need him don't we obviously for for games to come and like I said hopefully it was just a precaution and, you know, I think one or two others seem to go down a little bit of time. And towards the end where, you know, the referee just wanted to play and play and play because there was an injury to Archie Gray, which took a couple of minutes, I think, to sort out. We had a couple of substitutions, free kicks to them. You know, the goalkeeper came up and it all got a bit frantic towards the end, didn't it? Where it could have, you know, been closed out pretty, pretty 
easily. Now, I just want to speak about Jaden Anthony before I wrap this video up. And absolute condolences to Jaden. And it, it's an incredibly tough situation for him, obviously. But for me, he just, you know, just, just take a bit of time out. Because he, he, he just wasn't, you know, for all the goodwill in the world, wanting to play and probably play through the pain of, of, of what's happened. He wasn't he wasn't good today. He wasn't good at all. And I just feel he shouldn't be anywhere near. I'm sure the club have said to him, you know, do you what you want. We fully support you, whatever. Uh, and the fans are fully behind you as we are. But if it was my advice to him, I'd say just take a bit of time out, take a few weeks off and, 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 and just, Try and get your head right and, and and get yourself around it. You know, big love to him. He 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 was, you know, trying to play. Bless him. But I think he he just wasn't good enough uh, today. And I think that's another reason why um, we we need um, pl players uh, in that position. If Dan James is, it hopefully not too bad. But if he is, we need probably a couple for me um, because Willie Nonto. Who knows when he's back and he doesn't get enough game time anyway. Jaden's the same, doesn't get enough game time when you know when he's fully right on it. So, you know, what's the point? And if Dan James is injured, that's that's goals and assists out the team. So, we need to really, you know, we really do need to replace that in the last week of the transfer window. It's 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 very, very important, really, if if his injury is, is anything. Uh, serious obviously obviously we need full backs as well but I thought Archie Gray was fantastic actually tonight and you know what I think he's probably my man of the match I thought Ilya Ilya Gruev was was fantastic again Glenn Kamara was very very tidy with his passing as was Rodon and Ampadu but I just think probably Archie for me just stole it uh, stole it tonight for me there was that one moment where Jane and Anthony needlessly loses the ball in the middle of the park and um and uh, you know they're looking like a, they're going to counter attack. I think they've got men over on us, and Archie Gray just stands his ground, gets the tackle in, and we can then move forward. It was, yeah, he he was very good tonight, and again shows his worth, and you know shows us all that you know the fantastic things you can do when you're seventeen years old. You know, fantastic player. Well done, Archie. Well done, the lads. Really ground it out tonight. It wasn't a, a sparkling performance by any means at all. But we got the job done and we're two points behind Ipswich now in second place. We could, of course, overtake them in a couple of weeks when we go to Bristol City on the Friday night game. They don't play, I think, till the Saturday. So, there's you know, there's opportunity there for us to end that, that um, you know, by the, by the full-time on the 2nd of February, we could be potentially in the automatic promotion places, but it's a fantastic result tonight. Really nervy game, and like I said, it really didn't have to be for me. I thought, you know, we we, we made it a little bit hard for ourselves in periods of the game where I don't think we, we, we really needed to do. I, I think Norwich... I heard a lot of you know, Norwich fans saying they were happy with that performance. I really don't know how you can be happy with that. Lots of possession for Norwich, but very little bite. We we you know we marshalled Jonathan Rowe uh, extremely well, which he was a real danger coming into this game, but barely really got a touch. Only got that shot off um, from Melier, um, Melier saved comfortably in in the first half. So yeah, one of one of them, one of them games for him. But yeah, great to grind one out and another clean sheet for Melier who didn't have much all to do really but two points behind Ipswich now come on Leeds let's make it up to the automatic playoffs fantastic stuff well done to Daniel and the boys let me know your comments there in the section below remember to like and subscribe to the channel as well thanks a lot for watching marching on together I'll see you on the next one